In this part of the series, we're going to break down specifically what these cells do. Now, we have a row of osteoblasts there, and they work in a team, which I think is pretty cool. So the osteoblasts, they work together in teams to build new bone. You are constantly repairing and building new bones, even if you haven't had damage to your bones. Now, the osteoblasts, they produce new bone, and new bone is called osteoid. Now, it's made up of bone collagen and other protein, which is why it's so important to have a healthy diet. You need to have that available so the osteoblasts can build osteoid. Remember, osteoid, we're still talking about bones, but it's new bone, and it's made of collagen and other protein. Now, osteoblasts are the ones that control calcium and mineral deposition. Why do we care? Well, we care because the calcium and the minerals are what makes your bones strong. Think about what we know about osteoporosis. That means osteo bones. Porosis means kind of porous. That's when we have an issue where the bones are not as strong as they used to be. They're, the body may be leaching calcium from the bones. They may not be taking up enough bone of calcium matter. So it is really important that you have appropriate levels of calcium and minerals deposited in the bone so it gets strong. It can support someone's weight and it resists being fractured. So after the osteoids do their job, this part is so cool to me, they flatten. It kind of looks like a before and after picture, doesn't it? So after the osteoblasts have built and done what they were supposed to do, after they've filled in a cavity that was present, they flatten. So you see there we have the plump osteoblast and then the flattened osteoblast. Nothing is wasted in our bodies. I think it's so incredible. So they look like that when they're doing their job, when they're done, they become flat. And then they line the surface of the bone and now we call them lining cells. So what was the brand new bone tissue called? Right, osteoid. After they do their work, now what are they called? Yeah, lining cells. I know not creative, but it's pretty easy to remember because it looks more like a flat line than the bumpy one next to it. Now, which cells are responsible for putting calcium and minerals in bones to make them strong? Yeah, it's our friend the osteoblast. Okay, good. You're starting to get the hang of how you study as you go and that you need to always pause, recall, and think back and recall. And I promise you, your study life is going to be a lot more fun. Now let's talk about these lining cells. These lining cells regulate the passage of calcium into and out of the bone, and they respond to a hormone, all right? So a hormone is this chemical messenger that has a very specific target, and it tells the body to do something. Now, when these cells respond to the hormone, it tells them to make special proteins that activate osteoclasts. Now, we'll talk in another series about parathyroid hormone, but that's what we're talking about. Now, you maybe heard me say hormones in a funny way. That's because I want it to stick in your brain what it is. Hormones are chemical messengers. They're all over our body. They run our bodies. And parathyroid hormone is involved in this process. And it is one of these hormones that will tell the osteoclast to activate. And let me show you what happens in the next part of our series. Osteocytes are the brownish cells, as we've colored them, inside the bone. So you see the difference. Now we have the three types of cells on here. Just for fun, can you name the other two types of cells? Great. I hope you said osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Now, some osteoblasts, you see you've got the arrows coming down from them, they turn into osteocytes while the new bone is being formed and then it gets surrounded by new bone. So some of the osteoblasts turn into osteocytes when the new bone is being formed. And osteocytes are always kind of inside the bone. Now, osteocytes send out these long branches that connect to other osteocytes, so they're strong. Look at that in between each of the osteocyte cells. We just kind of put that there to remind you, they put out these long branches so they can connect together and become very strong. Osteoclasts are cells that dissolve the bone. So osteoblasts make the bone stronger. Osteoclasts dissolve the bone. Now, there's a good reason for that. Sometimes it's just kind of a cleaning and pruning service, right, in your bones. 
It needs to happen. If everything is in balance, this is a good thing. So an area that needs to be strengthened, the osteoclast will come in, dissolve that bone, and then we can be rebuilt. So let's talk about kind of what these guys do, these osteoclasts. Now the osteoclasts come from bone marrow, okay? So they're related to the white blood cells. Can you remember, is it the bone marrow that's in the spongy cells or the bone marrow that's in the compact bone that makes white cells? Good. It's spongy bone. So we've got this macrophage, right? See it right there? That's coming from our white blood cell friends. So osteoclasts come from the bone marrow and they're related to the white blood cells. Let's start this section off with a question. Which specific bone cell removes old bone? Is it osteoblasts, osteoclasts, or osteocytes? It's osteoclasts. Good job. Now, which specific bone cell builds new bone? Well, you've kind of eliminated one, so now you just have to pick between the two. Osteoblasts. That's correct. Now, here's a study tip for you to help you remember. You see we have osteoclasts and osteoblasts, right? They're both present on the screen. But look at the osteoblasts. That word itself has a B in it. So think builder. Now in our picture, you see we put a little construction cap on it, which I think is hilarious. And those kind of things kind of stick in your brain. But osteoblasts are builders. Osteoclasts have a C in them. So I remember them as cleaners. They come in and remove the old stuff that needs to be cleaned out right? And so the osteoblasts can build new bone. So osteoblasts has a B, that's why they are builders, right? Osteoclasts have a C, that's why they are cleaners, right? Now you have to be careful about how many things you try and tricks to try to remember. These types of things work best in the beginning when you're trying to keep everything straight. If you use them enough, you won't have to keep saying osteoblasts are builders, osteoclasts are cleaners, because you'll have encoded that in your brain so you can be successful without having to do that. But these kind of tricks are really helpful when you're learning brand new information and you're having a hard time keeping it straight.